Good morning. Good morning. Happy Aloha Sunday, you guys. You guys look so cheery this morning. <laughs> Welcome to Light and Life Ohana Church. We're going to just praise God this morning for this beautiful day. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for waking us up this morning, bringing us over the call all down into this beautiful place called Kane Ohe. We worship you this morning. We give you our full attention. We open our hearts to you, receive you. Come on in and have your way with us. Fellowship with us. Lift us up on this beautiful day. We pray all these things in your precious name. Are you calling me now? Oh, okay. I thought you was calling me, Lord. We hear you, Lord. We hear you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Worship the Lord.
God the praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Lord, cover me, my Lord. Purify my heart. Sanctify my soul. Cover Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit. 
with your blessings. Let's give God the glory. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful worship. Praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome once again to church, everybody. It's another day from a long week. And you guys look so bright and chipper this morning. I'm, I'm trying to catch up to you folks. But let's give the Lord, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we praise you for this beautiful day. Thank you for coming into our presence. Lord, continue to just lift us up. Wake us up. Let us be wide awake to receive your word for today, Lord. Thank for the hearts that are here, those that are online, that we prepare ourselves and expect something good that's going to happen today in our lives. So we're excited, Lord, to receive you this morning. We're excited to be here. We're just excited to worship you this morning. Touching each and every one of the hearts that are here, that are online, that will receive this message sometime this week. 
And Lord, that we may be able to utilize what you teach us today in our daily walk. That we can go and we can be that shining light that shares to the ends of the world. To everyone we come across. Even to those that we don't want to cross paths with. But Lord, we know you're going to put them in front of us. That, we be, that they will be able to see you through us. So Lord, let us be that sh bright and shiny light. And we give you this glory and honor. And we praise you with our whole being, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Good morning. Let's all give a smile to one another this morning. If this is your first time here, thanks for coming. But you know what to do. Smile. Smile one and give your face a chorus. Raise your hand to the one you love the best. Turn around, shake it with the ones nearby. And greet them with a smile. song just makes me smile yeah amen hey we got a few announcements all but one and so we got to make up another announcement so the first announcement is thank you guys for coming today i know we had a long night last night and but to see you guys here this morning that's awesome hey you know what i want to introduce these two right here. this is part of our, our board of directors this is fred and wendy we call them friendy for short yeah, Fred and Wendy. So this is Fred and Wendy from our church. And, uh, well, you guys know everybody else. So Fred, that's Auntie Doris. Uh, what is your name again? Conrad, Conrad. Nah, just joking, Conrad. Auntie Conchita. We got our security over here. And her husband, Uncle Meli. And there's Serena. Uncle Darren. Auntie Christy. You know, Shells. You know, Roy. And who's that over there? Oh, Joyce. She went open for us this morning. Let's give Joyce a hand. If it wasn't for Joyce, we'd be locked outside. We're going, we're going to sing from outside there. I want to praise and thank God for this day. Um, the other announcement we get every Tuesday is we still have Bible studies. As soon as, I'm f as soon as we finish moving, we'll talk about maybe doing an in-house Bible studies on one night. So we'll see. Uh, so we're praying on that. So pray along with us for that, that we can do some um, in-house um, Bible studies, because it's good when you get the in-house, because why? With the in-house Bible studies, potluck, right? <laughs> That's the best part. Yeah, you got to feed the soul and feed our stomachs, right? So hopefully that we can get back to that. So I want to praise and thank God that, uh, you know, through the pandemic, two and a half years on, um, it, it's funny, two and a half years on Zoom, but our Bible studies actually grew. We had more people joining, and we got like, my sister there from Molokai, and we also got my cousin there from Las Vegas. And even, you know, how God is so good that my cousin's son helping us, helping me to, to lead off the Bible study. So that's a good, that's awesome. So I want to praise and thank God for that. So if you're not doing nothing, every Tuesday nights we're on Zoom at 6 o'clock. Our Zoom number is right there, 337-083-9458. If you forget that, you can call me. You can find me on Facebook, 
Uh, you can find our church there on Facebook, our pages. Usually I try to update stuff. We also have a prayer page. You got prayers, let us know. And um, if it's not confidential, we put them on our prayer page so everybody can pray along. So every Tuesday, we're actually on uh, second chapter here yeah, of First Thessalonians. So it's, it's an awesome, awesome chapter. All right. We're going to do uh, a word for today, and uh, since last week I was kind of junk in the Hawaiian Olelo, I'm going to have my lovely wife come, because she better. So, honey, what do you think? You got to come in. You got to read the, you got to come up front and read it. Huh? Yeah, get them over here. You can read off of this. All right, good morning. Today's scripture is in, oh, okay, I'll just read it off of here. Ayako kako hello hello ana iloko o kapuke moa amose ikapo ino kinohi makuna umi kumano pauku ehiko ehika ika pauku umi kumaha pene i palapala ya. Oh. Um, Aloa oya ikai anela a Jehova maka punavai i loko o ka vai na hele. Maka punavai a ki a langnui e hele a isura. I maila ya e hagara e kaua mahine a sarai. No, no hea mai, no hea mai oi, e hele ana hoi oi i hea. I akula ke la, ke mahuka aku ne ya ma ke alo o ka hoku wahine mai o na sarai aku. Verse 9. Olela maila ka nela a Jehovah i aja, e hoia ho i oi ka hakuma wahine, a e noho i hoi oi ma lala a kona maulima. I maila ho i ka nela a Jehovah i aja, e ho anui loa no bao i ka poe mamo, a olela ko e hiki ke helu ya na ka lehu lehu. I maila ho i ka nela o Jehovah i aja, a ia ho i ua ha pai oi, a e ha nau mai no Oi i ke kikane, ai kapa oi i kona inoa o isema ela. No ka mea, ua loho noo, ya hove i ko popo, popi likia. E lilo awa nei i e ka kanaka hi hiu, e keu a kuno, ko lima i nga kanaka a pau, a e kue mai no hoi ka lima o nga kanaka a pau ya ya. A e noho o a nei no ia ma ka alolo o kona poe hoa hanau a pau. Ka pa akula ya ya ka kainoa o Jehovah nana i o lelo mai ya ya. O oe e ka akua ka mea i ike mai ya u no ka mea i hola ya. Ua i mi akuna o a nei ya u i ka mea ike mau i ya u no laila ua ka pa ya ua puna vai la. O beera la hai roi. Aia no i ma waena o kadesa a o berida. In Genesis 16 verses 7 through 14, the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring of water in the desert. The spring was by the road to Shur. The angel said, Hagar, Sarai slave girl, why are you here? Where are you going? Hagar said, I am running away from Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Sarai is your owner. Go home to her and obey her. The angel of the Lord also said, From you will come many people, to many people to count. Then the angel of the Lord said, Hagar, you are now pregnant, and you will have a son. You will name him Ishmael, because the Lord has heard that you were treated badly. Ishmael will be wild and free like a wild donkey. He will be against everyone, and everyone will be against him. He will move from place to place and camp near his brothers. The Lord talked to Hagar, and she began to use a new name for God, and she said to him, You are 
God who sees me, she said. This because she thought, I see that even in this place, God sees me and cares for me. So the well there, so the well there was called Bir Lahai Roy. It is between Kedesh and Berit. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Thank you, dear Lord, for this time, and thank you for the the message of scripture that you've given to us to testimony to our heart and to our lives, Lord. We pray the words of uh, comes through you and be given to the hearts out there, Lord. We come now and we worship you and we praise you for this day and bless the messages prepared for us today as well. May it strengthen us and nourish our, our hearts and our lives. We pray all these things that everyone here and online, Lord, and throughout the world. We pray all these things in your precious holy name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give her a big hand. Yeah, that was a lot of words. I'm so glad I didn't read it this week. So once again, our scripture reading is found in the Old Testament. It's the first book of the Bible in Genesis chapter 16. And the story about Hagar. And Hagar was uh, um, a servant to Sarai. If you know Sarai and uh Abraham, you can say Abraham or Sarah, same persons. And so um, the title of this message this morning is entitled, God Sees You. God Sees You. Early mornings can be painful for my friend Alma, a single mom of two. She says, when everything is quiet, worries surface. As I do household chores, I think about our financial concerns and the kids' health and studies. When her husband's abandon her, Alma bore the responsibility of raising her children on her own. It's difficult, she says, but I know God sees me and my family. He gives me the strength to work two jobs, provides for our needs, and lets my kids experience his guidance each day. Well, Hagar, the Egyptian maidservant, understood what it meant to be seen by God. After she got pregnant by Abraham, she began to despise Sarai, who in return also mistreated her causing Haggai to flee into the desert, where Haggai found herself alone, facing the future that seemed bleak and hopeless for her and her unborn child. But it was in the desert that the angel of the Lord came, and he met up with her and said, The Lord has heard your misery. And the angel of God gave Hagar guidance on what to do. He assured her of what the future would hold. From her, we learn one of the names of God, Elroy, which means the God who sees me. So we're going to look into our scripture this morning of the story of Hagar. And see what God has planned. And you know, when I when I was um, finding a message, I always find uh, God always tries to, um, as I go through finding a message, I always try to seek God's wisdom or, or what He wants me to share. And man, I was having a hard time. Yeah, honey, I didn't get. Usually, I get my messages around Monday or Tuesday, the latest. But once in a while, I'm just stumped, and I gotta be patient. I gotta wait on Him. And this message didn't come to me till almost Thursday. And uh, and when I, usually when I try to find a message, try to get one that's not a lot of scripture verses. I try to just get the main point. But in order for me to share this message, it needed to have all these verses. And I'm glad my, my wife volunteered to, to read it in Hawaiian. <laughs> a little fast, man. I think you drank too much coffee this morning. 
But I want to praise and thank God for the message today. And it's just such a fitting message that God sees us. And a lot of times when we're going through struggles, when we're going through uh, affliction, when we're going through um, our worries of our daily daily process, our daily needs, and, and, and we're running into to, um, brick walls and all that, we always get um, into this place of this sort of like this little slump of loneliness or... Um, uh, <laughs> like, like for instance, like us, we 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 pack in and all that, and we like when they get the two of us trying to pack up this whole house. These two cripples over here, because not only me, even her, her knee, no can she not can bend down and, and and even go on the ground sometimes. And we stay trying to clean, and we trying to pack, we trying to purge, and then everybody calling us that for help. Like we know, we like we get all the time in the world, and you know, but we go through this and we. You know, and through all of that, you know, I got to go out and do some other stuff for my cousin. And then and then I got to try to still trying to find one message and we can we can we start to get to that point. But the the awesome part is that God is like he knows and we just got to continue. We got to keep reminding each other that we got to we lean on God. We lean on God. God is going to take care of our problems. And the message today is is so fitting that sometimes we forget that God sees us. He sees what we're going through. He sees that the issues, he knows the issues, and, and we sometimes get impatient. Like, God, I want to get to the 14th. Huh? My 45 days is down to, like, what, 20 almost. Yeah? That's how we get. We get impatient because we forget. And sometimes God makes us wait because you know what? It's not the time. Yeah? You know, one of my dad's favorite uh, songs was, uh, what is that song? In His Time. You know that song? In His Time, in His Time, He makes all things beautiful. In his time, not in your time, it's always in his time. But us as humans, we're impatient when we like something. Yeah, honey, we like them now. And that's how we get with God sometimes. We start, some of us sometimes we get demanding, God, you know, I've been speaking to you for the last two weeks. And God said, Hey, I know, I see you, but no worry. What is that? No, you know when you call zippies? No worry, beef curry. You know when they get beef curry? That's what they say. No worry, beef curry. No worry. I see you. But it's not time. If I'm going to give you this now, not going to be perfect. See, God gives us what's best for us. Not what you want. What's best for us. See, God said, I provide for all. Of your needs. Yeah? Not all your wants. It's always in his time. His time is perfect, not ours. Yeah? When we go on our time, what happens? We either too early or we too late. We never write on time. God is always on time. Some of us we know. When we when we we need maybe we shot for pay our rent or something like that. Down to the last minute. And the last penny, God always comes true, right? And that's the that's the that's the reason why we should wait on Him, is because His time is always perfect. His provision is always enough. Yeah, God, you know I like the way God does things because He He think like the Hawaiians. You gonna get, you just take enough. Don't take too much, cause why? Poor, we waste, yeah. We got to get enough. And God gives us enough. And and, and sometimes we're not satisfied because we like that extra cushion. Yeah? We like that extra hundred bucks in my pocket. When you don't need them. You're going to only carry that around for somebody from stealing from you. And you don't need that. God says, I give you enough. That's all you need. Don't worry about tomorrow. I got you today. Tomorrow... It's not promise. So why worry about tomorrow? Let's get into the first part of our message. God 
sees our afflictions. That's the first part of our message today. Se verses 7 to 12. You see, there's three pe people involved in our message today. Abraham, yeah? Sarai, which is Abraham's wife, and Hagar, which is Sarai's Egyptian servant. And along with these three people, there's three afflictions going on now. Yeah, So Abraham and Sarai, they want a child. And you know, it's funny. Back in those years, they, had, they lived a long time. They lived a couple hundred years. So brother was up in years already, but they didn't have a child yet. And so that's what they prayed on. They prayed on that. So that was one of the afflictions that they were, they were dealing with. The, another affliction was Sarai gets impatient. On waiting to get pregnant. Yeah. And she talks to Abraham. She tells her husband to take Hagar. Just so that they can get their child. That's the second affliction that they brought into their lives. And the third one is that Sarai now, after all of that, gets jealous. Yeah. And starts to take it out on Hagar. So harshly that her guy um, can't handle. She start, she, so she runs away. She runs away from her mistress and, and her problems. How many of us have issues today? I'll raise my hand. Right? How many of us have been avoiding some of our issues and just we sweep it under the rug or we run away from them? Yeah? We sweep them out on the road. Some of us, we just ignore it like, like it'll go away. But the problem is still there. You know, it's, let me illustrate that. It's, it's sleeping in on the, your problems and sweeping them on the rug, ignoring it. It's like if you have a car that leaks. Yeah. <laughs> and so what we do, we just keep adding more fluids. Like the thing unplug itself or something. Or maybe we put that stuff with it, the ceiling. And we think we're going to, we think we're going to fix them. Oh, yeah, I'm going to put the stuff. The thing looks pretty good now. Yeah? And we don't, we don't check what, what, what the real source of the problem. And sooner or later, that small little leak problem, what happens? Becomes a big problem, right? And then all of a sudden, what well, could have been maybe just a little hose, that you waited so long to 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 um, figure out what the problem, the root of the problem is, that all of a sudden now it becomes an expensive fix. And that's what we do sometimes in our lives. We sweep our problems under the rug. We ignore our our problems because we don't want to maybe um, we don't want to get up into conflict, or we're too afraid to to um, to. Um, Con confront our problems. Or we, we, you know, we just impatient. We're impatient because God not answering our, our kind. So we try to fix it ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> How many of you like Mr. Fix It or Mr. Broke It? I was known as Mr. Break It. Brokanic, yeah, yeah, Brokanic, yeah. We try to fix the problem and we broke them, make them worse. And God sees what's going on. And the angel of the Lord now comes to Hagar and says, Hey, where are you going? What are you doing? Yeah? And, and so the Lord sends the angel to, to speak to Hagar and tell her that, Hey, turn around. Face the problem. It's okay. Because God is with you. He got you covered. He sees what's going on. He knows what's going on. But he wants us to come to him. Instead of sweeping stuff up and, 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 and just ignoring problems, he wants us to come to him. Whatever we're dealing with today, God says, come unto me, all you that are heavenly laden or burdened. He says, come unto me. Give me your problems. Let me carry your problem. Let me carry your burdens. You know, I always share this when I speak on this verse. Is that, 
Imagine you stay on one football field with one bag that weighs about 100 pounds. And you got to carry that bag across the field to the other side. That's what, 100 yards, yeah? How many of you want to carry that bag? That's what we do, you know. When we carry our burdens. We try to fix it ourselves. We're carrying this bag. And Jesus says, come unto me. Give me your burdens. And I will give you rest. What does that mean? He's telling us, give us that bag of 100 pounds. And you just walk across the field. I'll get the bag there to you. Isn't that amazing? That's what God does for us. He says, give me your burden. And I'll carry it for you. Just walk to the other side of the field. Just walk 100 yards. How many of us want to walk the 100 yards with that 100 pounds of bag on our back? Or walk without it and let God carry that? Wouldn't you want to let God carry that 100 pounds for you? That's what God calls us today. The problems we deal with today, he says, give it to me. I take care of your problems. But you got to trust me that it will happen in my time and not your time. Allow me to do the work because I can. Yeah, I don't need, God is telling us, I don't need your help. Just walk across the field. I got your burdens. Trust me. Give it to me and just walk. Just be that cheerful self and walk to the other side. That's what God calls us today. He knows our afflictions. He knows Hagar's afflictions. And he tells her, go back. Don't worry. Go back and continue to serve. That's what he calls us. Running away from our problems never solves anything. It is wise to return and face. Face them head on. Accept God's promise of help. Let me share with you one scripture. It's a really short, although the, the reading was long, this message is, is very short. And I'm not going to share too much scriptures. It's about two. And this is one of them. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And since we are reading and had a nice uh, uh, critique, if we could all read along. Okay. Can we do that today? Can you guys see that up there? Let's read verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can hear. Oh, bear, sorry. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out. So that you can endure it. Somebody give me an amen. amen. Isn't that awesome? Yes. God is so good. Not only that he knows your affliction, he sees it. He has the answer. He has the answer. God is what? Faithful. God is faithful. He will not let you get tempted beyond what you can handle. Bear what you can bear. Yeah, what does that mean? That hey, don't worry. He know how much you can. He know much how much stress you can handle. And sometimes he's gonna allow it to push you to that limit, because when he pushes us to a limit, what happens? We grow. Yeah. Sometimes if we don't push, you know, if if runners not push themselves, they're never gonna run longer or faster, right? They gotta push themselves to that limit. So that they can stretch, they can grow. And that's what happens with us. Sometimes God's push our stress levels because he knows how much we can handle. But you know us, we lazy. We don't like stress. We don't like push ourselves. We like everything on a silver platter, right? <laughs> we, we spoiled. We don't like go walk all over there and get our food. We let the food come to us. That's why we go to a restaurant instead. 
Yeah? That's why we go drive through because we don't like get out of the car for going and get our food. Yeah, we spoil it now. If not, oh, some of us don't like even do that, like me. Stay home, door dash. The bugger come right to your front door. Yeah? See how spoiled we can be? And God is saying, hey, get up. Get out of the house for a change. At least go drive through. You know what? Get out of the house. Go fellowship. You know, that used to be our favorite pastime. And since the pandemic, man, we haven't been in a restaurant for so long. It's good to go out and fellowship. That used to be my favorite pastime. So we miss that. But God said, you know what? I'm faithful. I got you. Yeah. But even when you are tempted, he will also provide what? A way out. Even when you're stuck in a corner and you think there's no way to turn, yeah, God opens the back door so you can get out. That's how God is. God is so good. Let's move on to the second part of our message. It's not only that God sees us. We see that God's mercy and submit to him. We see his mercy. But the trick is that we got to submit to follow him. He calls us to come to him. But unless we get up and go to him, we cannot get his mercy. Church, let me tell you this. His mercy is free. I say the word free because we all like free stuff. Yeah? We like free stuff. Hey, you know when they post something, oh, free stuff today. Oh, people rush. Church, God is free. His mercy is free. But how many of us rush to get his mercy? It's free. No, we don't. We have watched these people make serious mistakes. Yeah? Sarai took it into her own hands because she thought she knew more than God. What happened? It just caused more problems for her. Yeah? She would solve a problem of having a child. The other part was she never think about it. It wasn't from her. And there was another person involved now. Abraham, yeah, he went along with the plan. He knew he should have stood on God's word, but what? He caved in. He caved in to his wife. He went along with it. And what happened? He got stuck in the middle of it. Yeah? See, when, when, when circumstances begin to go wrong, yeah? Then, then we are lost. And, and, and instead of turning to God, repenting, coming to Him and saying, Lord, I'm so sorry. I should have listened to you. Forgive me. Simple as that. We, we tend to like what? Trying to hide. Like if we can hide from the Lord. And Hagar, same thing. She couldn't deal with it. So what happened? She ran away. But in spite of these messy situations, God demonstrates his ability to work in all good things. Yeah? His ability... And his word is always true. So what happened? Sarah and Abraham, despite not listening to God, despite trying to have their own child with someone else, he still, they still received a son that they desperately wanted. 
And we all know what happened. Yeah? One of the great things in the Bible is about Abraham and his son, Isaac. And God solved Hagar's problem despite Abraham's refusal to get involved. No problem is too complicated for God. If you are willing to let him help you, God, whatever, whatever issues that you might be dealing with today, God knows. God knows. And he says, come unto me. Give me your burdens, and I will give you rest. God knows. He can change your situation today. That doesn't mean he's going to answer your prayer right now. But he's going to change your situation today if you come to him. And if you watch and you be patient, God is faithful. Let me share with you a, a scripture in Isaiah. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. Let us all read together. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your, my, um, your ways my ways. Call them mine. It declares the Lord. Verse 9. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. God is so good. We don't need to worry about it. Because why? He knows more than we do. His thoughts are better than ours. His ways are much higher than ours. Why? Why do it yourself? Huh? Why do it yourself? And all God says is, come unto me. That's all we got to do. Come unto me and believe on me. And I got you. You know, like Hagar, we may be on a difficult journey, feeling lost and alone. But remember that even in the wasteland, God sees you. Reach out to him. Trust him. To guide you through. Well, before I end our message, I'm just trying to find this story. And I found a really long story. And I said, man, that's too long. So I started searching more. And it just didn't seem to feel like that was the right one. And so I, I found this other one. And this one I thought is so perfect. The author is unknown, but it's entitled, Let Go and Let God. As, a, as children bring their broken toys with tears for us to men, I brought my broken dreams to God. Because he is my friend. But then instead of leaving him in peace to work alone, I hung around. And tried to help with ways that were my own. At last, I snatched them back again and cried. How can you be so slow? Well, you know, we tell God that sometimes, yeah, because we're impatient. And Jesus says, my child, what could I do? You never did let go. I love this story because that's how we get sometimes. We turn to God, but we never let go. We're still hanging on to the wheel. We say, Jesus, take the wheel. And God tries to. But what happened? We're still hanging on to the wheel. We let go one hand, but the other hand still hanging on. It's like, like we're going to try to steer him. We're going to help him steer him. Yeah? But then he's steering him one way, and then we don't let go that way. So what we do? Which I steer him the other way. And we, we, Lord, what happened? 
You never let go. That's all we got to do. Let go and let God. Let me end with one more quote. This is by Lisa somebody. <laughs> Rush check or something like that. I, mean, I cannot understand these words that has too much consonants. Let go of all your fears and worries and let God take over. Giving up control can be difficult, but the changes you'll see in your life is well worth it. Amen. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Lord, I want to praise and thank you for this day. We thank you for the message that you had given us this, this morning and, and learning how to let go and trust you. Lord, when we say, take the wheel, help us to let go of it. Help us to trust that you got it. We give you all our burdens this morning, Lord. Let us walk up across the field with, with, without the burdens. Let us not carry any bit of that burden. Let it give it all to you and just walk and be that shining light that you call us to be. Yeah? Take our baggage. You can have them, Lord. I want to just walk and share the light. I thank you for that opportunity you give us right now today to give you all our burdens. That when we walk out of this door, we're just walking out as shining lights. Just like the glow walk we had last, last night. Let us just go out and walk. Walk around the mall. Shine the light. When we walk to go eat lunch, smile at people. Say hi. Say Jesus loves you. Be the shiny light. So, Lord, I pray that, that our lives will change today. Any personal burdens or worries or problems that we might have today, or we think we have today, let us give it all to you. We expect something good, and that's what I expect today, that hey, you got all my burdens today, Lord. I'm going to just enjoy fellowship after this. Have lunch together with everyone. And just... Enjoy this beautiful day. We thank you for the worship this morning, Lord. Thank you for the word that you gave us. And Lord, I thank you for the hearts that are here to receive you. To receive it. <clears throat> Lord, that they just not receive it, but they claim it. We claim this today. And we give you praise. We give you thanks. We honor you. We praise you. And we give you the glory this morning. As we pray this in your precious and your holy name. And everyone says, Amen.
and thank God for this beautiful day. Thank you for coming and, and just receiving him this morning. Um, do we have any prayer requests? We want to pray for Auntie Christy over here um, who um, is going through some medical issues, Lord, so we can pray for her. Um, you can continue to pray for us that um, we, that, you know, we're claiming it already, but we want to praise and thank God that he makes time for us to move and provides a place for us, a perfect place for us. So, I want to praise and thank that. Um, if you have any prayer requests, you can um, you can also write them on our prayer cards. We oh, oh by the way, we just got the new um, I think it's the new daily bread. So if you want a new daily bread, the new ones is here. Um, yeah. All right, let's let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we want to praise and thank you for this day. We want to um, pray for some petitions that we may have, whatever. Petition may have, we can first we want to pray for our Auntie Christy over here that's going through medical issues, Lord. Lord, whatever your will is, that your will be done. But Lord, we want to pray for her healing from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. On the right side, the left side, front and back. Surround her with your love, Lord. That the blood of Jesus rain upon her, that cleanses her body. That whatever is in the ailment within there, that you remove it, Lord, and clean this healing and in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we bless our auntie over here, Lord. Lord, also bless our auntie uh, Florence, who's away, who's been sick, but who's enjoying her time now that you have healed her and you can bring her home to, to us safely, Lord. Also be with the many unspoken prayers that surround us, Lord, on online, uh, those that will, will see this message, that whatever they're dealing with, whatever issues and problems, that Lord, we want to pray for them that they just give it all to you, Lord. Lord, you said, come unto me and give us all your burdens, Lord. So we're going to give our burdens to you, Lord. And we're going to give us, we're going to take your, your yoke upon us and give us rest. That we can walk as a shining light and not to be burdened, weighed down by all of the, our problems of this world. We give it all to you, Lord. Have your way with us. Lead us to what you call us to do, Lord, is to share the gospel. So, Lord, the prayer is to thank you for the hearts that are here. And we just lift you up. We give you all the glory and honor and all the praise. Imao mai ke loho oi, Yehovah ke akua. Kamakua aloha oi, o kamako haku aloha isu kristo. A me ka launa aloha olo olo ana mai o ko uane e malele. Me ka kou paka yao pao. May the blessings of Jehovah God, the Father of our Lord of love, Jesus Christ. And the love of the Holy Spirit. Abide with us now and forevermore. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. All right.
Pastor Jeff Kahapea of Light and Life Ohana Church. We are located in Kapolei on the island of Oahu, Hawaii. You can reach us at hawaiianslice at gmail.com or on most social media under Light and Life Ohana Church. Please feel free to share this message. And thank you for joining us. Mahalo and aloha. <laughs>